this lecture is for myocardial protection it is having a very vital role in uh, various cardiovascular procedures uh, let us see uh, it's a key for successful va cardiovascular procedure broadly can be divided into two parts uh, it is required during uh, surgeries that requires uh, cardiopulmonary bypass that are valvular surgeries coronary surgery coronary surgery cabg on uh, pump surgery internal cardiac repair in pediatric and congenital complex heart disease surgeries off pump cpb that are the off pump cabg uh, percutaneous coronary interventions okay uh, now objective of this lecture is to understand the anatomy and physiology of myocyte to understand pathophysiology of myocardial infarction to diagnose it and to understand different modalities that we can use to protect myocardium first uh, see the anatomy of myocardium uh, there are four layers of uh, layers of heart that is uh, pericardium epicardium myocardium and endocardium myocardium has uh, got uh, two types of cell uh, contractile tissue and non contractile cells uh, contractile tissues are uh, cells are 99% 1% is a uh, non contractile tissues that are having autorhythmicity and conductivity so having electrical property uh, second thing my, uh, myocardium is having more mitochondria than skeletal muscle because of having a higher oxygen consumption rate myoglobin in skeletal muscle and myo, uh, myoglo, uh, myocardium is structurally same but myoglobin concentration uh, is uh, relatively higher in myocardium due to having a high oxygen reserve second thing cardiac myocytes are branch cylindrical and short in nature uh, in this figure you can see the uh, microscopic structure of uh, my, uh, cardiac muscle uh, cardiac uh, myocytes are interconnected with intercalated disc intercalated discs are having two important structure one is gap junction that is meant for uh, electrical action potential conductivity and second is desmosome that desmosome is having a structural importance it binds uh, uh, myo myofibrils with it so it connects two myocytes with itself it is also having a, a sarcoplasmic reticulum that stores calcium that is important uh, while uh, uh, electromechanical uh, connection so when myo myocardium get uh, depolarized the uh, by example uh, uh, excitation the calcium released from sarcoplasmic reticulum will enter the cell and ectomyosin bond will appear and shortening of myo uh, myocyte will happen and it will produce contraction this is another slide in this we can see the gap junction and desmosome uh that is having a role in structural integrity of myocardium now let us see the physiology of myocytes uh, it is having a mechanical and electrical uh, property uh, it is having its own electrical property okay it is producing uh, it is having a, a sn node that is a action potential generator pacemaker and having a, 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 a conduction system that uh, conduct the electric action potential to the ventricular muscles having longer phase 2 than skeletal muscle so having longer refractory period uh, having a higher oxygen extraction as we uh, discuss before uh, because of higher uh, aerobic metabolism having high mitochondrial having a very high need of atp primarily use fat as energy source nearly 70% of energy is coming from fatty acid and glucose is used during anaerobic metabolic state like ischemia it is very highly vascular organ uh, major myocardial perfusion occurs during diastole right ventricle is having relatively low uh, intrachamber pressure than left ventricle because it is dealing with pulmonary vascular resistance it is Net, normally it is very low okay so right ventricle uh, gets perfused during systole and diastole as perfusion pressure diastolic pressure 
is nearly 60 and uh, RVSP normally is within 35. So it receives blood during diastole and systole. But LV, for, that is not correct for LV, it receives primarily a perfusion during diastole only. Uh, <coughs> this slide shows uh, various conductive uh, uh, pacemaker and its conductive fibers like SA node from that uh, AV node, bundle of his uh, common bundle, bundle branches, Purkinje fiber and ventricular muscle. Now, uh, the uh, second thing important is uh, concentration of gap junction. Highest number of gap junction is found in Purkinje fiber. So, uh, so, conduction of extent potential is very fast on that. Lowest number is found in AV node. So, conduction is extremely uh, delayed. So, uh, physiologically it is very important when extent potential arising from SA node reaches AV node, it gets slow down and that gives a uh, atrial uh, contraction a time to feel the left ventricle. After uh, some pa passing from bundle branch, it reaches Purkinje fiber where it uh, reaches very fast. So it gives proper feeling of LV and after that LV get uh, depolarized and systole begins. Now uh, see this slide for myocardial action potential. Resting membrane potential is minus 90 volt, millivolt. Uh, it is uh, dependent on sodium potassium ATPase. So it is active pump. Second thing, uh, partial depolarization phase, that is uh, phase 1, uh, that occurs after phase 0. Phase 0 is a uh, rapid sodium influx inside. Uh, after reaching a mem uh, membrane pot uh, potential of 70 from resting membrane potential, uh, myocardium uh, get excited and excellent potential reaches to plus 30. During this uh, phase, uh, excellent potential positivity generates and quickly after that reaching the peak point, uh, sodium channel close and sodium flux starts. So it produces a early repolarization phase. After early repolarization phase, that, uh, that calcium channel was uh, started about of, uh, uh, during the phase 0 and will continue to on and increases the inter, uh, intermyocardial uh, calcium level during this play 2 phase of phase 2 and potassium is step by step continually get uh, efflux from the myocyte. So at the end of uh, phase 2, sodium, uh, potassium, uh, calcium channel will get closed and potassium efflux will continue uh, to the phase 3. After uh, completion of phase 3, there is an uh, active sodium potassium uh, ATPase pump uh, that actively uh, uh, do uh, uh, sodium potassium exchange in manner that two, potassium, uh, 2 sodium will go out, 2 potassium will come in. So it produces active depolarization of uh, myocardium. It is very essential because uh, it has to reach to resting membrane potential of minus 90 to get excited again on next depolarization. It is XM potential of SA node. Uh, primarily uh, SA node is not having uh, uh, phase 1 and phase 2. It is not having play 2. Second thing, resting potential is not here. It, uh, its action potential is uh, uh, known as a pacemaker potential because it is having automaticity. So, it auto rhythmicity is uh, generated uh, due to its uh, uh, funny channel that is a sodium leak channel. Uh, after uh, at uh, starting of phase three that is minus uh, 60 millivolt of uh, XM potential, it get initiated and uh, slow in, uh, current inside sodium, uh, inside myocyte of sodium will start and will make sale to the threshold potential of 20, uh, 30 to 40. When it reaches minus 30 to 40 uh, millivolt XM potential, it gets excited and at this time, uh, long ch uh, calcium channel will get excited for reaching that point 
transient calcium channel was excited now the long uh, long uh, duration coalescent uh, channel excited so it will produce a rapid sharp rise of uh, uh, action potential of phase 0 after phase 0 calcium channel get closed and uh, step by step uh, se uh, potassium uh, outside uh, uh, efflux of potassium channel starts and it will give rise to phase 3 and after phase 3 uh, continuation of uh, uh, potassium extrusion will lead to phase 4 uh, my, uh, that action potential to reach minus 60 millivolt and from that again automaticity starts from activation of funny channels uh, these are uh, in this slide uh, uh, some drugs are given like evabradin that blo blocks funny channel uh, the beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, that calcium channel blocker will affect the phase 0 and uh, uh, beta blocker is having effect on phase 3. So slowing the refractor uh, repolarization will lead to delay in reaching the minus 60 millivolt of Resting, uh, re minus 60 millivolt of uh, repolarization action potential. So, new uh, 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 new action potential generation will be get delayed. So, it reduces the rate of SN node. Uh, now, this slide shows refractory period in myocardium. It is very important to know about refractory period in myocardium. Myocardium is having uh, nearly 200 milliseconds of refractory period that is uh, very high than the uh, skeletal muscle that is only in 1 to 2 millisecond. This refractory period is very essential for myocardial uh, function because during refractory period uh, heart will not get any summation or titany of a new uh, uh, excitation or depolarization. So it will not allow any depolarization during this absolute phase of uh, refractory period that is a phase 2 a start of phase 1 to the just before ending the phase 2 so it is absolute uh, refractory period uh, this is very important for emptying of heart and for after systole the diastole should be must so before heart get diastole in systole, it will never get excited, it will not generate any depolarization. Now after that comes uh, effective refractory period. If, uh, effective refractory period is, uh, heart is relatively uh, excited if some propagated uh, new stimulus from outside is given, okay, it is uh, non-conductive. So, effective refractory period is a non-provocated stimulus then ca that can induce a depolarization, direct excitation of direct handling of myocardium like that. In relative uh, refractory period, if stronger stimulus, uh, stimulus is given to the heart by uh, any drug or uh, second stimulation by pacemaker like that, at that time, uh, heart can uh, give us, uh, deep, uh, it can generate depolarization and myocardial excitation can be there. Uh, supranormal phase of uh, 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 refractory period is uh, very important. It occurs in late phase of T wave and uh, during this period only the R on T phenomena occurs and that can lead to a lethal VT also. Now see the perfusion of myocardium, <coughs> a heart is supplied by coronary artery, a two coronary artery, left and right, left is having two branch, uh, anterior LED and circumflex. So these uh, three coronary arteries and uh, coronary vein draining to coronary sinus to R uh, LA, so having a, a circulation. Now coronary perfusion uh, is very vital during vital aspect for uh, myocardial protection like see what is, uh, how should uh, how can we measure the coronary perfusion it is theoretically a diastolic aortic diastolic pressure minus lv and diastolic pressure so uh, if lv reaches uh, receives blood at we, uh, we uh, told people uh, previously uh, receives blood during diastole only 
right ventricle receives blood during systole and diastole both. The tissue perfusion indirectly we can uh, measure by subtracting mean arterial pressure minus central venous pressure and uh, if it is above 60 in adult it is uh, uh, having good perfusion pressure to tissues that includes hearts also, much heart, brain, kidney like that. So they will uh, perform uh, a normal physiological role. In uh, pediatric like in infant it should be above 30 and uh, above infant under adult it should be between uh, 40 to 60. Uh, it is showing coronary uh, flow regular autoregulation. In this slide, it is shown what is uh, the normal metabolic status and increased metabolic status. So, uh, when there is increase in demand, like exercise, fever, or uh, any stress, the coronary autoregulation will be uh, get acti uh, activated in local uh, and humoral way and uh, systemic wise endocrine function it is also helping so this graph shows maximum dilatation possible second pharmacological maximum dilatation how uh, much it can be uh, by increase in blood pressure that would be increase in flow and that increase in flow uh, can be by increase in dilat dilatation of coronary artery the perfusion pressure uh, is nearly in this graph if we say it starts at 60 so minimum 60 minimum, uh, millimeter mercury of uh, mean arterial pressure is good for better uh, metabolic uh, supply of better better uh, blood flow to the myocardium for normal metabolic function in this illustration uh, it shows uh, uh, various pathways for uh, autoregulation that occurs in my, uh, coronary circulation. Uh, neurohemoral factor, noradrenaline, adrenaline that are released from sympathetic system or adrenal gland, acetylcholine by vagal. Uh, physical fa uh, factors, arterial pressure, coronary arterial pressure, right arterial pressure, left ventricular and diastolic pressure. Okay. Uh, systolic comp uh, compre uh, compression and diastolic compression endothelial factor endothelin that is uh, 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 excitatory that increases vessel tone nitric oxide that is relaxant de uh, decreases arterial tone in uh, increases blood flow prostaglycine uh, that is also having a, a negative effect on arterial tone endothelin, uh, the hypoxic factor that is helping in regeneration or neovascularization. Metabolic factors are adenosine primarily due to hypoxia, the ATP production reduces that also lead to increase in adenosine level that is having protective role as a coronary artery dilator and having a, a positive effect in ischemia by reducing the oxygen requirement and reducing inflammatory markers. Now PO2, PCO2, uh, potassium and pH status, so acidosis will lead to dysfunction of myocyte. So we have to uh, correct that also. Endocrine, paracrine factor, angiotensin that is also uh, positive uh, uh, having positive effect on arterial tone. Histamine is having a negative effect. Bradykinin is also having negative effect. Thromboxin A2 is uh, increasing arterial tone and uh, can produce thromboembolism locally serotonin is also positive effect now uh, myocardial ischemia myocardial ischemia is caused by mismatch between myocardial, oxi myocardial oxygen demand and myocardial blood flow supply which result in re reversible myocardial suf uh, dam uh, damage suffering and when prolonged in re uh, irreversible injury if it is not perfused within 20 30 minutes now uh, myocardium has got ischemia now if uh, uh, that uh, recirculation happens within the uh, told uh, reperfusion period of 20 30 minute the reperfusion injury can develop how it is so when we do thrombolysis in acute mi angioplasty or coronary cardiac surgery so it will uh, reperfuse the ischemic myocardium 
now that uh, ischemic myocardium has altered metabolism due to ischemia locally hypoxia have developed now uh, due to that hypoxia cellular atp uh, cut down and that oxy due to that lack of oxygen lactate will raise and locally if we see then there will be a raise in uh, hydrogen ion so ph will be lowered that will impact the uh, for reperfusion injury like when oxygen get uh, increase due to reperfusion that oxygen free radical will develop from membrane phospholipids second altered calcium handling because of the dysfunction of the various channels present in myocardium the uh, calcium inflow and uh, outflow is get hampered uh, by uh, dysfunction of channels so intracellular calcium will get up and uh, alter metabolism due to uh, lack of oxygen myocardium shift to anaerobic uh, metabolism that also lead to increased lactate and pyruvate that produces acidosis microvascular dysfunction also happens because the endothelial dysfunction will lead to reduction in uh, uh, prostacyclin and nitric oxide platelet and neutrophil uh, get excited so it will produce a thrombosis a platelet plugs and will aggravate the myocardial injury so that reperfusion injury will produce a stunned myocardium or no reflow due to immune block or by uh, lethal reperfusion means extreme increase in uh, cellular calcium level will lead to a titani like status and myocardium will get dysfunction will lead to necrosis now in uh, another slide it is showing the what happens if myocardial ischemia in absence of reperfusion here we can see a 70% of myocardium get lost myocardial ischemia with reperfusion we have uh, saved 40% of myocardium 30% of myocardial get lost and if we do it by uh, cardio protection manner to handle the cause like handling uh, uh, oxygen free radical handling metabolism shifting heart to aerobic metabolism only uh, improves ox oxygen delivery and uh, improve uh, free radical damage giving adenosine so all these improves uh, cellular function faster and can we if we uh, that is join with it with cardio protection manner so we can reduce that uh, infarct size uh, to 25% uh, <coughs> ischemic precondition when uh, it is adaptive mechanism induced by brief period of uh, uh, reversible ischemia increasing heart resistance to subsequent longer period of ischemia if we, uh, this is uh, routinely uh, applied while uh, dealing with uh, percutaneous uh, coronary intervention they are uh, inflating and deflating cuff every 3 to 5 minute okay so that will lead to uh, adi local adenosine release and coronary autoregulation will get uh, activated so neovascularization will develop and that will accustom the myocardium with a, a new M, uh, ischemic event if occurs so improves the, its systolic function by improving the metabolic stage of myocardium now see after re, uh, reperfusion this is the two common phenomena stunning and hibernation uh, if we define hibernation a situation of chronic contractile failure in a uh, viable myocardium which normalize upon reperfusion has, uh, has been termed myocardial hibernation so here the event is chronic a chronic a stunning can also produce this uh, contractile failure and uh, that can be recovered by re, uh, revascularization uh, would take weeks to month to become near normal second thing it is a metabolic adaptation and uh, clinically a prolonged systolic dysfunction weeks to month function restores after revascularization taking it will take nearly weeks to month uh, on histologically uh, uh, when observed it shows a reduced number of myofibril 
dis uh, and its disorganized structure with increased collagen and glycogen contained in myocyte second uh, second thing is turning myocardial turning is characterized by reversible post ischemic contractile dysfunction despite full restoration of blood flow so it is relatively uh, acute one then the, the uh, hibernation phase and uh, it is uh, nearly requiring uh, hours to weeks or uh, like in days it will get restored uh, after re revascularization has been attempted now myocardial protection during the procedures that are of cpb of cardiopulmonary bypass during this phase these are the things that we we'll, uh, we should care of to protect myocardium like blood pressure and central vein uh, central venous pressure and maintain oxygen saturation so uh, oxygen delivery will get uh, a proper during ischemic phase of, uh, like in cabg uh, when we are giving uh, various position like in uh, om position or like in rc position at that these positions are very uh, compromised in that case uh, we have to manage the blood pressure and cvp uh, that previous in previous slide it is shown the difference between blood, uh, mean arterial pressure and cvp if we are able to maintain above 60 it is very fine so we can do it by uh, med, uh, drugs like using ntg inotrope uh, vasoactive drugs to make as much as uh, feasible that uh, that uh, difference is keeping within the range so it will lead to proper myocardial function ecg will help to show the very ischemic events like st elevation uh, uh, heart is giving rnt phenomena that shows a reduction in coronary blood flow so the affected active sodium potassium atps channel that is a very early sign so we have to uh, correct that as much as quickly possible 2d echo will show the wall motion abnormalities or any valvular leak or uh, global dysfunction like that septal function uh, we should uh, observe as much as possible because it is the uh, main partition of uh, myocardium that is in 40 percent volume and is also uh, very effective for right ventricular function. ABG will help uh, to, main, uh, to uh, give insight of uh, cellular metabolism like acidosis, electrolyte imbalance, potassium correction and uh, second hemato uh, to know the hematocrit value, oxygen uh, carrying capacity must be as much pos uh, upper than uh, if possible to uh, help ischemic myocardium act we have to maintain above 300 likes so uh, there would be fluidity and low chance of thromboembolism and direct observation of myocardium is based that it will show any cyanosis or dusky myocardium or this uh, not proper contracting having lateral wall ischemia or uh, having a distension in contraction reduced contractility that helps us to know the status of myocardium. Now come to the uh, surgeries which requires uh, CPB. Uh, that in that uh, during this surgery, surgeon wants bloodless field with a kinetic heart. For that, we are using cardioplegia solution. Major types of cardioplegia solution are extracellular that is having higher potassium. Uh, higher uh, extracellular potassium first depolarizes the myocardium and then due to uh, calcium sequestration and it goes out so we lead to diastolic arrest second so uh, extracellular uh, cardioplasia solution are primarily to, uh, said as a depolarizing myocardial uh, cardioplasia and intracellular uh, is having another effect it is uh, based on sodium so in that solution sodium is very low in concentration so it uh, produces hyperpolarization of myocardium and uh, that will arrest heart in diastole it is also a longer acting would uh, give cardioplegia for nearly uh, three hours some examples are uh, uh, uw university of wisconsin Eurocollins, and uh, uh, htk solution Histi uh, histidine tryptophan crypto 
go to Reddit. That are the agent they have edit, uh, edit with the uh, cardio production uh, for cardiac production, and it is stored as custodial also. By temperature wise, if we define uh, cardioplegia could be a cold or warm, and uh, we can use as a plain crystalloid solution alone, diluted in uh, RL, a cardioplegia solution 4 is to 1 concentration, and we can dilute it to blood also. We will see afterward. Now, this is the two uh, standard cardioplegia solution. Upper one is uh, St. Uh, Thomas cardioplegia solution, both are crystalloid cardioplegia solution. Uh, here we can see sodium is 110, potassium 16 millimol per liter, magnesium is used, calcium is used, bicarb for buffering agent to re, uh, buffer the acid, uh, acidic environment of uh, ischemic myocardium and here lidocaine is not used. Difference is that, that in the del Nido solution they are using lidocaine to uh, reduce the uh, hyperpolarize the cell membrane. So, reduce excitability of myocardium to reduce myocardial oxygen demand. Second thing, uh, in del Nido, mannitol is also used 20% to increase uh, uh, solution uh, osmolarity to reduce the myocardial edema. Primarily, del, del Nido solution is used for longer duration. So, it, uh, it, is, it will give you nearly hour to 90 minutes and uh, is primarily used in pediatric case. Uh, in adult also nowadays we can use these two solutions can be used in blood also. Now myocardial oxygen demand with respect to temperature. So as the temperature drops we can see that demand of myocardial oxygen uh, is reducing drastically. So uh, the surgeries can be performed in different way like on CPB. With empty beating, we can perform surgery. If tem uh, temperature is 37, then the, uh, that oxygen consumption would be 5.5. And if it is uh, cut down to 22, the demand would be, uh, de will be very low. But uh, normally in beating surgery, uh, this much temperature we are not uh, allowing because other tissue function will get affected due to high acidity of uh, local tissues. Empty fibrillating heart will also having a, a great effect of uh, uh, low temperature. So and cardioplegia solution. So cold cardioplegia solution is routinely used for protecting myocardium due to reducing oxygen consumption rate, and that will lead to low dysfunction and ATP requirement, and uh, will conserve the heart. Now principles of myocardial protection. The cardioplegia solution should be given rapidly and it should produce my, uh, car my cardioplegia as much as early possible. So it will limit the loss of high energy phosphate inside myocyte. So metabolism will get protected. We should use hypothermia as previous slide we have seen. Provide buffering agent to buffer the uh, local acidosis that is generated during hypoxic uh, metabolism. Avoid substrate depletion during ischemia. We can give a different substrate like alpha ketoglutarate, uh, glucose, or sucrose, amino acid, uh, aspartate, glutamate. Like uh, that are the uh, uh, substrate to for that uh, myocardium. Uh, alpha ketoglutarate is uh, nice. It is it is having a ketone and it is very. Uh, well manual managed uh, metabolized by mitochondria so having better ca cardiac protection uh, avoid intracellular edema by using hyperosmolar uh, cardioplegia solution so cell edema will be reduced it will help after uh, uh, removing cross clamping and coming out from cpb uh, avoid reperfusion injury as much as possible by using adenosine leg drug that uh, uh, reduces cell damage by reperfusion injury I, using uh, allopurinol or glutathione like uh, agent al also help to reduce the oxygen free radical formation. 
Now this slide shows the very vital aspect during uh, CPB. Like uh, right uh, ventricular septum weighs nearly 40% of cardiac mass. If it is damaged, it will uh, lead to wall motion abnormality, septal wall motion abnormality, and it will lead to LV and RV both dysfunction. So we have to see for uh, uh, that septal wall motion abnormality every time when we are coming off from, from the CPB. So it will give you a proper uh, knowledge that how was the myocardial protection was done during CPB. Uh, prop I also we can do for noting down the how much injury has been occurred to the myocardium during CPB. Uh, this solution we can say as HTK. It is using a, a tryptophan alpha glutarate and histidine as an additive. Tryptophan is utilized for membrane stabilization. Alpha glutarate increases energy production by reperfusion of uh, uh, reperfusion and the precursor to ATP it, as it is a, f a fatty acid part so we will give nearly a higher uh, ATP per molecule than glucose. Uh, mannitol is osmotic agent that uh, regular uh, osmotic agent and also a redu uh, reducing property also so reduces oxygen free radical and reduces cellular edema. Histidium buffers that supports anaerobic glycolysis uh, and is better to maintain pH and post-operative electrolyte and metabolic level. <coughs> Delindo solution as we previously seen, we can use it with blood at 1 is to 4 blood crystal uh, combination and uh, uh, it is also a magnesium and mannitol that role we have seen primarily used in pediatric surgery uh, in mean, uh, it is uh, just like meat for immature myocardium uh, crystalloid uh, uh, cardioplegia so when we are not using blood in, uh, during uh, cardioplegia uh, it is uh, for short procedure like AST repair or uh, very short procedure metal uh, repair not requiring a very high, a long period of uh, cardioplegia, then we can use it. St. Thomas, we have to repeat it every 20 minutes. St. Thomas cardioplegia is based on uh, extracellular principle, so having pot high potassium. Delindo is also extracellular, the, so th this type of deep uh, cardioplegia solution is having uh, some negative effect on myocardial reperfusion on base work. It increases intracardial, uh, intracardial uh, calcium level, myocyte cal calcium level during depolarized phase and will require oxygen, de uh, increase oxygen demand and can lead to post reperfusion cardiac arrhythmia due to higher calcium level during that phase. So uh, some studies are going on using of uh, uh, extra, uh, intracardiac cardioplegia having low sodium level uh, primarily that are using, using for cardiac heart transplant or that type of surgery requiring higher period of cardioplegia nearly 3 hours. Uh, blood cardioplegia now when you are, we are using crystal cardioplegia uh, diluted in blood it are having uh, some uh, favoring aspect like uh, coronary is uh, made to f uh, made for flowing blood so it is having more rheological effect uh, when we are using blood as a cardioplegic uh, dilution it is having oncotic uh, normal oncotic pressure it improves oxygen delivery because having hemoglobin so uh, will help for oxygen storage innate free radical scavenging system blood is having uh, histamine contain uh, proteins inside so it helps in natural way and uh, it is having uh, normal oncotic pressure also so it will have a negative effect uh, a positive effect to reduce the cellular edema now if we divide in uh, in manner of roots we can give it anti-grade posterior or retrograde so uh, <coughs> And uh, when uh, integrate is given, it is good. Now, in uh, some case where like uh, aortic regurgitation is there, 
regurgitation is there, then we can use the fibrillator and with the use of fibrillator we de uh, reduce the demand of myocardium, we can re uh, reduce temperature also at that same time to reduce the myocardial oxygen demand and after that aortic get open and uh, step by step left and right osteal cardioplegia we can give. Retrograde cardioplegia is also another choice. Retrograde cardioplegia is good for right left ventricle but if we see on right ventricle it is primarily uh, drained by Thebesian veins, not a coronary vein. So it will receive a poor supply of cardioplegic solution during uh, uh, cardioplegic uh, retrograde. So it will produce uh, relatively poor production of right ventricle. So uh, after giving it, we have to uh, electively give uh, uh, RCA cardioplegia. Some drugs we can use for myocardial protection like beta blocker, esmolol are used in cardioplegia solution to reduce oxygen demand to reduce uh, to cut down the myocardial excitability. Calcium channel blocker will also help uh, as it reduces cytosolic calcium load so it will help to protect myocardium from being necrotic. Adenosine will help in a gr very great way so it uh, increases coronary blood flow it also do the action in uh, the picture we, we have seen, uh, shown in this slide. So it reduces oxygen demand, reduces cytokine and chemotactic factors and increases oxygen supply by uh, stimulating vasoactive growth factor. So we should use this routinely uh, to add on cardioplegia solution on, while giving it in <coughs> coronary uh, during CPV. Nicoran is also a good drug having potassium sensit sensitization so helps in maintaining repolarization a phase of relaxation so helps myocardial uh, uh, calcium load uh, second NTG also having good role uh, as a, a coronary dilator and improves local uh, coronary perfusion so that's all so I think uh, this lecture will help you uh, better understand the uh, myocardial protection in daily life. Thank you very much.